we're going to start with this the student seminar. This is the, I guess, the first experimental from, from the Gamma group, from the Coscrophy group from, the, from this year. And this is the case that Anna Montaner is going to give the seminar about the isospin mixing and in the study of cobalt 56 non yast states. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure she, she will explain us yes. what is okay. all the <laughs> non yast <laughs> states and, of course, all the questions. Anna, for sure, she will answer. Yeah. Yeah. So, most of you know me, I think. So, I, I work in the gamma spectroscopy group in the experimental nuclear physics group uh, at IFIC. And today I will talk a little bit about the, the title so long that I will try to explain to you what that means. So I will, this is a very brief outline, so I will uh, make a brief introduction, like some theoretical aspects, and then the physics motivation for my experiment, then the, some results and future perspective, and then also uh, some uh, to show for the, the people that are not so familiar with the things we do, so to show you uh, some facilities we use for our work. Um, so this is the chart of nuclides. I think that uh, most of you know. But um, so uh, chart of nuclides is a map of the nuclides where uh, one can show the nuclear and radioactive uh, properties of the nuclei uh, in contrast with the periodic table because here you can uh, see all the different isotopes of the nuclei. So in this chart, so nuclei are uh, plotted in, uh, in the form that in the x-axis you have the neutrons and then in the um, uh, y-axis you have the set uh, number. So um, here you would have like a, a line set equal uh, n, so this would be so something like that. So you can see that, um, um, well, the black points are the stable, the stable nuclei, and this would be the value of the stability. This is how it is called. And then the rest of the nuclei are all of them unstable. So they would try to evolve in the way to reach the value of the stability. So all those nuclei would try to go to the uh, black valley uh, in a different ways. So for example, in this side would have the uh, proton-rich area, and then here is the, pro uh, the neutron-rich uh, uh, area. So here, uh, the nuclei will try to, uh, um, so they will change one uh, proton into one neutron and they will evolve to the value of stability. And on the other, uh, in this side, this would be the other way around. So here we would have the red uh, nuclei are the ones that decay via beta plus decay, then the blue uh, area would be the Beta minus k, then here we have the alpha radioactivity, then the green points would be a spontaneous fission, and then here we have the super heavy elements. Okay, so this would be to give you like an overview. Um, so, what are mirror nuclei? Mirror nuclei uh, are nuclei where the number of protons and neutrons are interchanged. So, here I show you some examples. So, for example, 50 chromium and 50 iron, or 54 iron, 54 nickel. So this would be a pair of nuclei where uh, the number of protons and neutrons are interchanged, but they are summed the same, so they have the same number of nucleons. Um, decay studies and nuclear reactions are uh, tools that provide us uh, information on nuclear structure and nuclear properties. And uh, I will center my talk in those two different methods that are the beta decay spectroscopy and the charge chain reactions that uh, because they are governed by the same operators which are the sigma tau operators which are quite simple. 
and they are different methods, but because they are going by the same operator, so they uh, give like uh, complementary information because they give to us, um, they, they produce mirror transitions. The Fermi operator is a tau operator and uh, this produces isospin excitations and the gamma of Taylor is a sigma tau and produces isospin excitation also but also spin excitation. So if the T is the isospin, the third component of the isospin is defined like that. So when you have one of those uh, uh, decay or reactions, so in the nucleus, this third component of the isospin changes. And uh, if, the, if the isospin, if it was a perfect symmetry, which is not, but if it was perfect, so mirror nuclei would have identical structure. So they don't have identical structure because isospin is not perfect, but uh, Nevertheless, it can give to us very useful information. If you know one nucleus, so also having information of its mirror is very important. Um, most of you know, I think, that the Fermi uh, operator connects the initial state of the parent nucleus with its uh, isobaric analog state in the daughter, which means uh, it's an state that has the same quantum numbers, J pi, which is the spin parity and the isospin. So gamma of Taylor would go to the different uh, states with different isospin, but the Fermi transition connects only a state which has the same J pi, this is uh, a spin parity, and also the same isospin, even if we are changing the third component of the isospin. So when this uh, transition splits, which is quite uncommon, but sometimes you have the Fermi decay not going only to one level, but also to the, a neighbor level, so you have isosplin mixing, and it's quite uncommon. And so in this case, you will have isosplin impurities. This means that one level can have mainly one specific value of the isospin, but also would have a, a, a small component of the isospin of the neighbor, for example. And this produces um, isospin impurity. And this is due to the off diagonal matrix element of the Hamilton. Okay, so uh, I will uh, focus my talk on the comparison of the beta decay of 56 C <coughs> and the charge chain reaction on iron 56. Um, this would be the beta plus decay and this experiment was uh, performed by Cani, that is a, a facility uh, at France. And then the charge chain reaction on a target of 56 iron that was done at Osaka in Japan. And then uh, I will focus my work on the 56 cobalt, uh, that is a nucleus I am studying. And then to show you where we are located, so here you can see the double magic 56 nickel, which has 28 protons and 28 uh, uh, neutrons. And this is important in the 56 cobalt because it can explain the uh, proton hole and part of a neutron particle interaction. So this is also important for the theoretical part because you can understand better this. Uh, the shell model and the, these interactions close to the um, double magic nucleus. So beginning with the uh, beta decay of the 56 nickel, uh, zinc, sorry, uh, this experiment was carried out at the Lisset 3 facility of Benil uh, in 2010 and um, it was focused on the production of the T-set minus 2 56C nucleus, which is quite exotic, and uh, my group was uh, part of the collaboration of the analysis was done by my colleague Sonia Rigo. Um, and here I just want to show some um, um, ideas of the experiment. So here you would have, this is the experimental setup, and uh, here uh, are the four uh, Germanian detectors to detect 
um, the gamma D excitation of the of our nucleus. And so here you have the beam you want to study of the nucleus, and then here you have a double sided silicon detector here, where you can measure the the decays and the implantation. So you have the betas and the protons. And here you can see a identification plot. Um, you see here all the nuclei that were produced at the experiment, and um, because it was uh, very exotic, our nucleus, so it was the one you see that there is not so much uh, statistics. Uh, and the uh, analysis of this experiment is already done and published in uh, physical review letters. So I will try to explain the main ideas of this uh, work. Uh, you see here, we, uh, the experiment was focused on the beta decay of the 56C that was decaying into copper 56, um, which is the mirror nucleus of the 56 cobalt. That is the nucleus I will talk about this later. So first of all, uh, a proton decay of the ions. This is the isobaric analog states. That means I display. This is the state that you can reach via Fermi transition. And then uh, proton decay of this level was observed. Here you see the proton energy peaks that corresponds to all the protons that were detected here. <coughs> and, um, so this proton decay was observed, although this is isospin forbidden, because this nucleus has um, this isospin, one half, and here we have uh, isospin equal to, and the proton carries an isospin one half. So this is because of this um, isospin value. So the proton decay is forbidden, but nevertheless, proton decay was observed. So what this means is that here you have uh, uh, isospin impurity. This is an evidence that this level is mixed with this low line level. So we have isospin mixing. And this was uh, evidence of this isospin mixing. Okay. Another point was that um, um, this is the separate proton separation energy, and it's very low. This means that all the cases about this energy where uh, could be possible the proton decay, they would decay via protons, because it's like the strong interaction is fa faster than the electromagnetic interaction. So if proton is possible, gammas wouldn't be the uh, stronger case. But um, the competition between protons and gamma were observed. So this is also quite uh, strange and it was like, it's an open question uh, and something that we would like to understand. Right? And then uh, what was very exotic and very important for the publication was that it was uh, for the first time seen the beta uh, delay gamma and proton decay in this FP shell. So it has been observed, it had been observed previously in another uh, low, in a lower energy levels, but not uh, so high. So this was quite exotic, it's an exotic mode of decay, and it was also um, published in, in this paper. Okay, so, because uh, here there are uh, things and open questions, things that we don't understand. So, studying its mirror nucleus, which is a 56 cobalt, it is very interesting because, as I explained, it can give to us information. And for example, maybe because of the low statistics, some gammas that were supposed to be here uh, were not seen, and these the, the solid uh, arrows are gammas that were seen in the experiment, but not the dashed lines that we know that um, they are in 56 coal nucleus from previous experiments. Okay, and then regarding the second motivation, so uh, studying the mirror ch charge chain reaction. So this uh, helium 3 t reaction was performed at Osaka, and uh, they also studied the splitting of the isobaric analog states. <coughs> um, and the neighboring zero class state. And here I, uh, one can see the energy of the triton 
and then uh, you see each level here depending on the energy. But uh, uh, according to their results, there were two levels that they would suppose, these are the blue and the pink, they are supposed to be one plus in the literature, but you can see that they don't follow the typical distribution. This would be uh, angular distribution of uh, one plus, but as you can see, is quite different from the expected one plus. So this also opens a question regarding uh, the spin parity of these levels. So why we wanted to study the 56 cobalt? So first of all, to study fermentation of the isobaric analog state, and then also for the second reason I gave, that is the clarification of the JPI assignment of those two levels. So moving now to the experimental part, uh, we perform an experiment at the TUM. This is the Te Technische Universität München in, in Munich um, with mini ball that I will explain now that are a, a kind of uh, a specific kind of detector. So we perform the experiment in this laboratory in June 2013 and we did a uh, PN re uh, reaction. So uh, we had a beam of uh, protons a target of 56 iron with different, we use two different targets and then different uh, proton beam energies. And then you can see here the accelerator, which is a tandem. Um, here you accelerate the protons to until you reach the energy you need. And then we also had to perform an angle calibration reaction to know the, in which angle each detector is located. So here I, I show a picture to show you how uh, it looked like. So the mini ball are high resolution germanium detectors. Uh, this would be a cluster of mini balls. So each cluster has three crystals and each crystal has six segments. So you have a really detailed angular uh, information because each segment can uh, detect the gammas and then uh, you have a very well um, angle situation. So we use four uh, minimal clusters and this would be the direction where the proton comes. Mm, because maybe it's not so familiar for you, so I plot here uh, what is the kind of a study we do if we want to, if you do gamma spectroscopy. So after the reaction you have the protons coming to the target and then you produce a new uh, nucleus. So in our case, it would be the 56 cobalt. And uh, you produce the nucleus in an excited uh, way. I mean, it, 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 uh, you produce it like uh, in excited uh, levels, so then you have the gamma D excitation. So what you have is that you have your nucleus, but it is excited, and then you measure the gammas going out. So here we had the four clusters, and this would be the gammas going out from the our nucleus and what we want to do is in order to uh, construct the level scheme what you do is you choose one gamma for example this in blue and we call it gate and we try to look for all the rest of gammas that comes at the same time for us for example the same time would be uh, around 100 nanoseconds so you choose one gamma and then in this temporary window you study all the rest of gammas that came at that moment. So in this uh, in this way, you are able to construct the the level scheme. Here I show the the information that is known so far about the 56 cobalt. It is uh, it looks like it is really well known, but you will see that is there is much much new information about this nucleus. Um, here you have the two zero pluses that they are the that are isospin mixed, and they are the ones that we wanted to study. Um, and now to explain what means IRAST. Uh, the IRAST is a state with minimum energy for a given angular momentum. This means that uh, those states are non irast This means that, for example, the minimum energy for zero plus would be this one. There is another uh, spin parity at uh, lower energy, so this would be the readers, and then when you go higher in energy, 
So you you reach different North Iranian states. Okay, so here I, I do like a zoom on the nucleus, uh, on the levels I want to study, and those are the two isospin mix. Ah, sorry. So those two, okay? So this is a zoom on those two. And um, <coughs> first of all, what we wanted to do is populate those two non iraso states, which is not easy because of the chitin reaction. And nevertheless, uh, we strongly populated both, uh, both states, uh, which is, was one of the goals of the experiment. Um, here I will show you, for example, what we do when we look for the new gammas. Here would be, if we put here the gate, and you are looking for this gamma, for example, you choose a gate, and then you have all the spectrum with all the gammas. And in this case, we wanted to see this gamma. So we wanted to see that we were uh, seeing this gamma, which means that we have populated that level. So we did see this uh, peak, which is not very, maybe you don't see very clear this picture, but this is like a, a bigger part of this uh, little space. Well, here I had a square and it disappeared. But this is a sum of these two peaks. And this means that we populated that level. It was an evidence for the population of uh, one uh, t equal one state. And then uh, also, as I said, if they are um, isospin mixed, so they should behave similarly. So they don't have to be behave exactly the same because isospin is not the perfect symmetry, but they should uh, at least, for example, have the same number of gammas, the exciting the level. So those three uh, gammas were previously known, but from this low-lying level, only one gamma uh, was known. And uh, we wanted to see, or we expected to see, those two gammas. And we do observe those gammas, even if they are much weaker than those two. This means that, uh, for example, they would have uh, three gammas also, but the intensities, the relative intensities are not the same. So this also proves that isospin is not such a perfect symmetry. Uh, this would be again, for example, if we put here a gate and we are looking for this new gamma. Here is the gate we are using and then you see the gamma. They are really like tiny uh, uh, peaks, but they are clean. So you can see this would be like a new gamma. And here the same for the other uh, new gamma that we were looking for that if you put the gate here, you are looking for that gamma. So here is the gate we used. And you also see here, it's not like, uh, there are not so much, there is not so much a statistics, but it's a clean bit. So uh, as far, um, so far, I ha um, we have observed both expected gammas, or those energies that uh, confirm the, the excitation of the isospin mix level even if they are much weaker in comparison with the other level. Then we have observed a huge number of new gammas, so more than 80, even if the, uh, it was supposed that that nucleus were quite, it was quite well known, but uh, so far there are around new, uh, more than 80 new gammas, which is a lot. And then we observe also the gamma D excitation of previously known levels, so this means that we can improve the energy precision of those levels. Uh, we also clarify the spin parity of some uh, previous known levels, but for which there was ambiguity for the spin parity. And then we have uh, seen also new psychic levels around 20. There is also evidence of the 1 plus character of the levels of the Osaka experiment that we wanted, we wanted to, um, to confirm, but we still have not done uh, the angular distribution of study. So this will be confirmed later. And the level scheme is under construction. So for the future, for example, uh, as I said uh, in, the, in the first uh, slides, so 56 cobalt, uh, because it has one proton less and one neutron more than the double magic of 56 nickel, this is important in order to understand the proton hole and neutron particle interactions. Uh, for the future, so also the, you know that you have the Doppler effect when uh, 
you have uh, the reaction because some llamas can emit uh, where, while they are flying. So also from the vital parameter, you can have uh, lifetime upper thresholds for many of the levels. And then uh, we will have clarification of the spin party for many of the levels after doing the angular formulations. And then um, there are some also ongoing theoretical interpretations based on shell model that Alfredo Poes is doing in Madrid in the Universidad Autónoma de Madrid and Edward Simpson uh, from Australia. So, so far there are much new information about the 56th code. And then to finish, I wanted to, for those of you that are not related with this uh, nuclear uh, experimental science, so here there is a map, a uh, worldwide uh, map, where you can see all the facilities where uh, radioactive uh, beams can be produced. Um, and nowadays it's very important the one in Danil, in France, then at CERN, I sold them, then in Uvascula, in the GSI, the Future Fair, uh, and uh, Riken, which is in Japan. And nowadays it's like the, the one that goes with higher intensities and, and exotism in Nucleus, and then also in Vancouver in Troy. Okay, so that's all. And this is all the people involved in my work, and thank you for your attention. So, uh, questions? I have a very nice question. So, um, if you want to study an excited state, you have to populate it first. Yes. How can, can you force that or is just you just insist until it is populated? You try, so it's quite tricky <coughs> that and, and sometimes it's very difficult because you have to uh, select like, uh, the right energy of the beam, for example, in order to populate that. And then also the kind of reaction you want. For example, if you we did the PN reaction because we thought that the PN reaction was the one for the the one that would populate our levels. Some in some other cases you can choose another reaction and then another energy. For example, we we just did that because we were trying to populate the best those two levels. And we, we were changing, we knew the, the range of energies we wanted, but you see that we used three different energies of the problem. So it's something that you have to tune and you try to yeah. In the beta decay, it's different because you have like a window, energy window, and from the beta, you can also, you can only reach lower uh, levels. But for a reaction, it's more complicated. More questions? I have a one. Uh, the, how is the, for instance, the feedback that you have with the theoreticians? I mean, in the sense, all these levels you are measured, but maybe you have to guess which level you want to populate, or, or they the, are. The feedback? For, for, for instance, what is the. When you have results and you want to check. Yes, yeah, for instance, to look for that levels mm -hmm. or that channels of decay, you, you are expecting that the a theory is saying to you there is this. A process that could happen, but if you find new ones that are not expected, so there is you some mean talk you with want the to, For example, you want to populate one state and you are trying to know that this is in, in contradiction with the theory, for instance. I don't know. You find that you have in the result that you found 19 candidates for new cha yes. uh, so, uh, events yes. that they were not mm -hmm. observed like before. A new Yes, yes, exactly. Level. So what you do first, you have to uh, to have like some uh, results, and then what you have, um, for example, now we have two theoreticians making shell model calculations and in they order to contrast that. So you have your so I'm still doing the level scheme, but when mm -hmm. it's finished, <laughs> um, so one once you have your level scheme, you can check with the shell model and. They are doing, for example, calculation with different, um, um, I don't know the name, but they can use different interactions for the shell models, and you try to, to see if they check. And it's like uh, in two directions feedback. So 
you tell the theoreticians we are seeing those peaks and he tells you okay now I'm not getting this peak with my model so maybe you are wrong or maybe the theoretician is wrong so it's like a two sides feedback more question? So, I guess there are no more questions, so we thank Anna. <laughs> and we meet again in after Pasqua, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You're going to receive many emails. <laughs> <so laughs> <laughs> <laughs> You're going to receive many emails.